Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the website where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. I'm here with John and today we're going to be discussing the cosmological argument. Now, the cosmological argument is an a posteriori argument that attempts to prove the existence of God. So, it's an argument that uses external observations and experiences in order to prove its conclusion. Okay, so how does it prove the existence of God? Well, in short, it looks at the functionality of our universe causation and order. These are things we experience in the universe and essentially these have to come from somewhere and the argument is that this comes from God. Well how does it reach that conclusion? Well there have been many advocates of the cosmological argument and the most famous was probably St Thomas Aquinas. Now Aquinas used five ways to prove the existence of God and the first three are considered to be part of the cosmological argument. So let me go through them. The first way is the argument from motion. Everything we see in the universe is changing, or it's moving. Now, we know nothing can change or move by itself, unless it has something else that is changing it. Well, if something is dependent on something else for its motion, then how does the whole chain start? Aquinas rejected the idea of infinite regress, the idea that there is not a start, that everything is just part of an infinite chain that goes forever into the past. Because without a first movement, nothing can start the motion off. Something needs to begin everything. However, if everything needs a mover and you cannot have infinite regress, then logically you need an unmoved mover. Something that moves other things but cannot itself be moved. This we know of as God. Yes, the unmoved mover. This was an argument used by Aristotle too. Yes, it was. Okay, so that's the first way. Now, the second way is known as the argument from causation. As we can see, in our universe, and in our world, everything has a cause. Cause and effect, it's the fundamental law of physics. How did the glass fall? I kicked it. I was its cause. Who caused me? My parents. Who caused my parents? My grandparents, and so on and so on. We can also see that in our universe, nothing is the cause of itself. Everything needs something beyond itself to be its cause. So then, how did the universe come about? What caused the universe? What caused life? Well, Aquinas has already rejected the idea of infinite regress. We cannot just have an infinite chain of causes, as there would be no first cause to start the chain. So what we need is an uncaused cause. Something that does not need a cause, but is responsible for causing everything else in reality. This we know of as God. Yeah, that makes sense. And finally, the third way, also known as the argument from contingency. Now, Aquinas says everything in the universe is contingent, meaning nothing has a necessary existence. Everything that exists could not have existed. It's perfectly possible that everything is could not have been. And as everything could not have existed, it also means there was a time when everything did not exist. There was a time when the tree down the road did not exist, when the building we are living in did not exist. And it's important to note that all contingent things rely on something else for their existence. However, if everything at one time did not exist, that means nothing existed. So there was nothing to cause the existence of everything else. So Aquinas agrees there must be a being with necessary existence, a being that was not brought into existence, but has always existed, and this being we know of as God. Yeah, I see. So that's pretty much Aquinas' cosmological argument. Well, I can see it's a good argument. It uses observation and experience to logically prove there's a God. Yes, exactly. So many philosophers have studied and redeveloped the cosmological argument and have turned it into a fantastic theory. Leibniz used the principle of sufficient reason to further strengthen the cosmological argument. Leibniz claimed that everything we see in the world and in our universe has a specific reason as to why it's there and why it exists. As I said, the reason I am here is because of my parents and so on and so on. However, we can see everything in our universe relies on something else for its existence. Nothing is its own reason for existence. But then, how can we have a universe if everything relies on something else for its reason? In order for everything to come into existence, there must be a necessary being that is the reason for its own existence. 
and this is again God. Well, although the cosmological argument seems very strong, I still think there's a lot of problems with it, and I do not think it conclusively proves the existence of God. Really? Like what? Well, firstly, we have no idea how the universe came into existence. No one did, and no one will, ever experience it. All we are aware of is how things within the universe work. But why should we argue that just because the laws that apply within the universe need to apply for the universe as a whole? David Hume raised this objection. He argued there was too much of a big leap within the logic of the cosmological argument. You are basically saying everything in the universe has a cause, therefore the universe has a cause. This is an assumption and I do not think you can expect the same laws that apply within the universe to apply for the universe itself. So then how would you explain the existence of the universe without a god? I would agree with Bertrand Russell. In a live BBC radio debate, Russell was debating with Copplestone on the cosmological argument, and Russell basically said that the universe is just a brute fact, something that exists that does not need an explanation for its existence. Just because everything within the universe has an explanation does not mean the universe needs one. He used the example of the human race and mothers. You have a mother, I have a mother, and we are part of the human race. But it seems weird to say that the human race has a mother. What applies to the parts within does not apply to the whole. So, because everything in the universe has a cause, or an explanation, or a reason, does not mean the universe has a cause, or an explanation, or a reason. The universe is just there, and that is all. Well, it seems to me that that's just running away from the issue. I mean, to say the universe is just a brute fact just seems too simplistic. The universe is not just there, it's contingent. There was a time when it was not there. Science has proven this. We have seen with the Big Bang Theory that there was a specific time when the universe came into existence, a point when it was created. So I cannot agree that it's just a brute fact. That has always been, because it's not always been. It had a start, and for it to have a start means it had a cause. So of course the universe needs an explanation and a reason and a cause, because we know it had a cause. No, 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 we do not know it had a cause. The Big Bang Theory is accepted by some, but it is by no means the conclusive answer. There are other ideas that are gaining recognition, like the Oscillating Universe Theory, which basically argues in favour of an endless chain of different universes coming in and out of existence. So, this universe may have come into existence, but it is just part of an infinite chain of universes. So, now you're arguing in favour of infinite regress, the idea of an infinite universe. Well, yes, I think Aquinas and the cosmological argument rejects infinite regress too quickly. I mean, why should we dismiss infinite regress? On what grounds are you rejecting it? Well, here I would like to raise the Kalam cosmological argument also put forward by William Lane Craig. This attempts to show the logical absurdity of arguing in favour of an infinite universe. Go ahead. First we need to make a distinction as there are two types of infinity. We have possible infinity and actual infinity. Possible infinity is when something has come into existence at a specific time and will carry on existing forever. Right. Actual infinity is when something never comes into existence, but has always existed. It goes infinitely into the past and infinitely into the future. Okay. Now, you are arguing in favour of an actual infinite universe. The problem raised by Craig is that if we had an actual infinite universe, then it would be logically impossible to ever reach the present time. What do you mean? We reach the present by successive additions. One moment of time is added by another moment of time, and then added by another moment of time. But if we have an infinite past, if we could go forever into the past, then there is no point we can begin to add moments in order to reach the present. Think about it. Now is the present. We can call this zero. The future moment will be plus one, and the past minus one. If I was to ask you to count all the negative numbers until you reach zero, you never would. There are infinite negative numbers, so if you began counting down, you will never reach zero. Do you understand? Kind of. Let me put it like this. If you were to set out on a walk to reach a destination, and your destination was an infinite miles away, no matter how long you walked, you will never reach it. Because however far you walked, however many miles you walked, more miles would keep adding on. Yes, I understand. 
This also applies to the past. If the past is infinite, then no matter how much time has passed by, you will never reach the present moment. No matter how much time has passed, you will always be going through an infinite past. Yes, I see. So, because of this, we have to reject an actual infinite universe and the possibility of infinite regress. The universe therefore needs a beginning point. This beginning point was caused and it was caused by God. Okay, one more problem. Why does God not fall with the same problems as an actual infinite universe? Why do you argue that an actual infinite universe is absurd but still claim God is actually infinite? Because God is not a contingent being. The universe is. The universe is space and time. God is beyond space and time and the laws of nature. God is a necessary being, so the same absurdities do not apply. Anyway, that's all we have time for. We hope you enjoyed the vibe, and please check out the website for some more philosophical debates.